Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Dark House Films, the show dedicated to teach you how to do the best visual effects of modern films with low budget. And today, we go to the speed force. After this tutorial, we are going to need Trap for in particular from Red Giant and Twitch from Video Clip Live. Speak! Good boy. Now in this effect, I did use a green screen play, however, I won't be getting into green screen because there's already too many tutorials out there. With that being said, let's get started. Alright, uh, he already have my subject keyed out. I'm gonna go ahead and press Ctrl Y to create a new a new solid and I'm gonna name it background and I'm also gonna make it around a purplish color. Press Ctrl D to duplicate it and add a fractal noise. Change the contrast to about 150. Go to your first frame and add a keyframe to your evolution. Go to your last frame and change the evolution to about 10. That way you start getting a, uh, a warpy-ish look. Change the blending mode to add. Also on your layer, change your blending mode to add. And uh, just start playing with the, with the settings of the fractal noise. Now, there is no right or wrong way to do it. There's only trying to achieve the look that you guys want. Go to your effects and presets and add a turbulent displacement. And just like your and just like your fractal noise, go to your first frame, set a keyframe on your evolution, go to your last frame, and uh, set a change the value to around five or so. And we'll start getting something that looks like this. And change the opacity, bring your opacity down to about 27 or so. You might want to change your blending mode as well to a normal. Press Ctrl Y to create a new solid and name, name it Particles 1. And go ahead and add Trap Code Particular. Change your particles. Uh, change your emitter type to a box, and on your emitter size on X, go to one, and your emitter size on Y, go to 1080. Now your position, bring it down to a uh, around to the left side of your composition, and you go to your physics on your air, and add a wind on X to about 5,000, and your size to around 10. Now I'm gonna change the timing on my layer. That way, my first frame, I already have particles flying throughout my screen. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some motion blur. Changes the motion blur type to sub frame sample. And change the levels to around 27. That way we'll start to get some sort of streaks And I'm gonna rename it Particles LTR B, which stands for left to right big, I guess. Now press Ctrl D to duplicate the layer. What's your effects menu? Change the random seed. Just uh, whatever value, just to get a different look. And change the size on your particles to a five. 
let's shut off our first layer of particles that we created and uh, go to the motion blur and change the type back to linear and now we have those sort of actually spheres flying around now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and apply a camera lens blur and change the blur radius to a 10 Now, press Ctrl D to duplicate that layer one more time, and I'm going to rename this one Clouds LTR. I'm going to shut off the rest of the layers, that way they're not bothering me. Change the particle type to a Cloudette. Change the particles per second to a 50. Change the size to about 100 and bring your opacity down to 25. Change your blending mode to add. Turn on your motion blur one more time and change the blending, uh, the motion blur type to linear and change your opacity again to 50. Let's go ahead and adjust the particles per second one more time to 100. Press Ctrl D to duplicate the layer one more time and rename this one RTL. So what you're going to do is you're going to look for a position and change it to a, the right side of your composition. And you're going to go to your opacity, bring it down to around 10 since these particles represent the ones that are closer to the camera. And change your wind uh, to a, instead of negative 5000, go to the opposite, which is 5000. Now you're going to duplicate the other two layers as well and you're going to do the same process change the position to the right side of your composition and then and change the value on your wind now look for a tint effect and apply it to your subject now we want to have our subject in a bluish color around the same blue just go ahead and sample the blue from the background create an adjustment layer and add a camera shake and change the amount to about 5. Now all your, all the first layers we created, let's go ahead and pre-compose them and, and name them background. Now on our subject, let's supply a light wrap effect just to blend it slightly better with the background. And we can go ahead and adjust uh, the size. And we can scale it down so it can look better in our, in our composition. Now, apply an exposure to your subject. Bring your exposure amount to about 0.5. Now on your background pre-comp, on the fractal noise we created, um, go ahead and apply a uh, auto scroll horizontal. That way the layer starts moving from the left to right. Click um, select mirror edges, and on the speed, so the change it to about 2,000.
Now go back to your main comp. Press Ctrl Y to create a new solid and name it Rain. Go ahead and look for the CC Rain effect. Apply it. Now on your wind, bump that up all the way to 10,000. And the uh, and the drops change that to 1,000. And bring your opacity down to about 10. Now go back to your pre-com background. Press Ctrl Y to create a new solid and name it Energy. Go to your effects and presets and look for the advanced lightning effect. Go ahead and apply it. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to set a few keyframes for the origin and for the direction of the lighting. Uh, it doesn't really matter, we're just looking for different positions because... Uh, then we're going to set up a few keyframes for the opacity. Uh, bring it down to zero, about two frames after, bring it up to 100, two frames after we get zero. And let's just, control, uh, let's just copy and paste out those keyframes across our timeline. Now you might want to change the uh, the glow on the lightning to a red or so, or a sort of a white, pinkish color. Also, your core settings, change the color to a red. Press Ctrl D to duplicate the layer. And uh, the keyframes that we originally created for the for the lighting, let's go ahead and change the time on them. That way we have different lightings. Uh, you know what? This could have... <laughs> you guys could just copy and paste these keyframes one more time instead of recreating a new layer and giving your computer more shit to run. I'm sorry. And I don't know why I didn't, didn't think about that in that particular moment. So, but just duplicate it if you like or copy and paste the other keyframes. Now, go to your main comp and just uh, change your subject, line it wherever you guys feel it's, if it's better. Press Ctrl Y to create a new solid. I, for some reason, I made it red. Bring it down to a 20% opacity. Now, Ctrl D to duplicate it, name it vignette. Uh, I changed the solid to a black. If you've seen my tutorials, I love vignettes. Don't judge me. Uh, send, change the mask opacity. Uh, <laughs> Change the mask mode to a subtract and feather it out around 200 pixels. On your adjustment layer, go ahead and add a CC lens effect. And change your size to about 100, about 250 or so. On your subject, go ahead and apply a CC radio blur. And change the amount, uh, put, put your amount around 20. And we're gonna start animating this. Now, set a few, about two or three frames after, change your amount uh, to 830. Now, go ahead and copy and paste these keyframes and then just do the same thing across your timeline. I personally feel this is a lot since it's a short. Uh, to me, this is faster than just setting up expressions that I personally don't know. I don't know how to expressions very well. Now, on your adjustment layer, go ahead and apply a twitch. Enable your blur and light and change the amount to 20. On your particle layers, just go ahead and apply a glow effect. And... Bring down your opacity slightly to a 25% or so, to a 10% to the ones above your subject. And go ahead and apply the same glow to all your layers, including the ones in the background. 
and then here you could just if if the glow gives it too much of a glow you could just adjust the the opacity on the layer or, or also the particles per second I duplicated the rain layer one more time and I put it above my subject and just like the particles and, uh, and then the wind instead of 10,000 bring it to a negative 10,000 and put it above your subject now your red solo color let's go ahead and change that to a blue or whatever color you guys feel looks better with you I change it to a light blue and then on my adjustment layer I applied a uh, diffuse glow and then I uh, changed the threshold to about 65 Now we'll be posting a lot more tutorials, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. And also, let me know what other tutorials would you guys like to see. What other effects? I'll be more than likely to recreate them and show you how to do it. Also, don't forget to check me out on Facebook or Twitter. Well, I'm Sean Yarris, and I'll see you guys next time. Speak. Fuck. Good boy.